Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Ant Will Reacts, I am sorry. Um, today we're reacting to the new death battle between one of my old favorite cartoons, Danny Phantom versus American Dragon Jake Long. Um, I don't know who might win this, so... Unless I, I need to look at this more carefully in order to see who would win. So... Yeah, it's gonna be a little, a little weird to figure out who would win. So yeah, and I can't wait to see who's next for Death Bell. I'm always excited to see who's next for Death Bell. I'm either surprised, upset, or just I don't know. But anyway, um, with that being said, um, let's begin. What's up, everybody? This is Carrie Shawcross for I Have Notes, new new podcast, Issa Badiola, other people in RT Animation. We're going to talk cre creative stuff. Whoa, what's that behind me? This is my cat. Ah. <laughs> he doesn't like this. Oh. Premiering April, April 30th. April, premiering April 30th on RoosterChief.com. There's a thin line between the natural and the supernatural. And for some reason, the weirdest of powers keep showing up in teens. When's it gonna be our turn? Danny Phantom, <laughs> Amity Park's half-human, half-ghost superhero. Teams. And Jake Long, the hip American dragon of New York City. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Young Danny Phantom, he was just 14 when his parents oh, built a very strange machine. It was so. designed to view a world unseen. He's gonna catch them all, cause he's Danny Phantom. Nice, but let's focus on his backstory. No. What do you mean? No. I just did. In song. Fair enough. Danny wasn't much different from your usual high school teenager. A bit awkward, a bit geeky, but not unusual. Except for the fact that his parents had taken up a very unusual profession. Yeah, hunting ghosts. Among their spectral seeking equipment was the Fenton Portal, meant to open a rift to the realm of spirits. The Ghost Zone! But then Danny took a look inside of it. There was a great big flash. Everything just changed. His molecules got all rearranged. Uh, okay, I'll stop. Unbeknownst to his parents, the portal permanently changed Danny's body, transforming him into a half his, or a human infused with idiots. ecto energy. AKA Ghost Powers! And when ghosts started invading the living world, Danny took it upon himself to catch them all. And despite this show starting in the early 2000s, that's not talking about Pokemon. Weird coincidence. He soon became known as the supernatural superhero, Danny Phantom. And for some reason, nobody figured out that Danny Fenton was Danny Phantom. People are dumb. Maybe they were just playing along? He is a kid after all. Nah, they're stupid. To catch ghosts, Danny used a lot of his parents' signature gadgets, including the Fenton Thermos. Once a clever way to sneak your beer into concerts, now a device that sucks up and traps the undead. Wait a minute, is this kid a Ghostbuster? Or, I guess, a ghost <laughs> Ghostbuster? In a way, but Danny's mm. ghastly form meant he could do many things that Bill Murray could not. He can do anything a ghost can, like floating around and spooking the shit out of people. He can fly, sense other spirits, freeze foes with ice, create equally spectral clones of himself, possess others, turn invisible, and expel ectoplasmic energy in the form of barriers and attacks. Oh yeah, he's a laser shooting ghost. Ectoplasma. Whatever. He can fire beams from his eyes, his finger, and even his spectral sphincter. I guess that's why they call him Ghastly. Huh? Maybe oh. you should see a doctor. But his deadliest, most exhausting ability is his ghostly wail. This one comes from the other end where he's literally yelling at people. He really is a teenager. This whale is an omnidirectional burst of ectoplasmic energy, which, at its strongest, can eradicate weaker ghosts in a single shot. Jeez. <gasps> oh, See, just like that. Why? Danny's proven himself as a powerful ghost fighter again and again, like the time he went Kamehameha on this poor skeleton at a mini golf course. 
Comparing Danny's size to the crater formed, the energy needed to vaporize this much terrain would be in the ball or golf park of around 550 tons of TNT. Plus, his ectoplasmic beams tend to be considered actual lasers. <laughs> I knew it! They move in straight lines, burn on contact, bounce off reflective surfaces, and can be channeled through a magnifying glass, so they are likely comparable to light in both makeup and speed. And he's shooting and dodging mm. these things on a daily basis. You'd think with speed like that, he'd never be late for class. Or get smacked by some of these heavy hitters like his nemesis Vlad or this dragon lady, Dorothea. Dorothea's fire breath was powerful enough to disperse a large cloud formation. Measuring the distance between this castle and the outskirts, we determined the cloud would, at minimum, need a radius of over 300 meters to encompass the landmass the castle is situated on. Dispersing a cloud cover of that size would need over 7 kilotons of TNT. He even beat up his future self, Dan Phantom! Cause I guess, you know, that shows that he's matured, because he, he's Dan now. As powerful as Danny <laughs> is, he's still a teenager and has all the arrogance and moodiness that comes with the territory. And he's got a really bad habit of losing his powers in the most random ways possible. Meet a genie? Power's gone. Shrink ray? Sure, why the hell not? I'm just surprised he didn't trip into his own thermos at some point. Oh, wait, he did. Still, Danny has saved his hometown and the entire world time and time again. He had to stop all the ghosts that were coming through. He's here to fight for me and you. Ah, oh, damn it, now you have me doing it. <laughs> A going ghost. Thousands of years ago, a group of mystic warriors were formed. This was the Hunts Clan, and their mission was to eliminate all magical creatures from the world. But these Foot Clan wannabes were in over their heads thanks to the most powerful creatures of them all, the dragons. In short, every corner of the world has a dragon tasked as a guardian of the magical community. This mantle is passed down generation by generation. So after the Chinese dragon's daughter moved to America, her son became the first American dragon, Jake Long. He's cool, he's hot like the frozen oh, sun. Not again. He's young Come on, and fast, stop he's singing. chosen one. He's the American dragon. You're gonna do this the whole episode, aren't you? Probably. Yep. Jake was only 13 years old when he became the newest protector of magic. His responsibilities became tough to handle alongside school and friends. Lucky for Jake, he didn't have to go it alone. His grandfather Catch was his race. mentor in martial arts and all things dragon, and had a magical dog, Foo Dog, who I'm pretty sure has a higher body count than any of this show's villains. Oh, he sucked the Titanic. Now rest in peace, DiCaprio, <laughs> you handsome devil. I learned how to fight bears from watching you. I'll never let go. Uh, to be clear, Jake possessed the ability to transform into a draconic persona, complete with brand new physique and abilities. Oh, duh, he's a freaking dragon! He's got the claws, the teeth, the tail, the wings, and of course, the raging, burning fire breath! He was throwing <laughs> fire from his mouth, his hands, and even his burning beehole! All of these kids should really go see a doctor. Nah, his dragon <laughs> form's in super top condition! He's even got ultra sight and vision thanks to his eye and ear of the dragon powers! Perfect for when some pesky ninja punks are trying to get the jump on you. God, I hate it when that happens. That's why it's always important to have anti-ninja protection! What? Where did you sign up for that? Why do you think I bought 10,000 screaming rubber chickens? Try and step foot in my shack, you stealth assholes. He doesn't even need to transform fully to use these powers. Technically, Jake can morph individual parts of his body at will. Man, I wish I could transform into a dragon. Nothing would be sweeter than kicking ass as a magical fire-breathing super lizard. The key word being magic. Yep, he can fight magical creatures ordinary people can't, including ghosts. He can even use his chi to create huh. doppelgangers of himself for a helping hand. As a dragon, Jake is tough enough to smash through steel, hold up a pillar, and annihilate a house with a simple sneeze. He can produce enough flame to obliterate several sheets of stone. Measuring the size of the hole here next to the girl in the shot, we can tell his fire breath destroyed over 6 million cubic centimeters of stone, which would need over 30 tons of TNT. That's like getting hit by three mother of all bombs, which was a massive 10,000 kilogram nuke. You wonder if Jake ever uses breath mints? He can also fly over 100 miles per hour, moving from ground to cloud level in mere seconds. 
And he can dodge lasers, too. And they're totally light lasers, reflecting off mirrors, straight consistent speed, all that stuff. Jake has accomplished a lot as the Amdrag of New York City, but it wasn't always easy. Yeah, being a teenager is hard, not to mention keeping his powers a secret from his monster-hating dad. Really landed a winner there, Mom, whose own father is a dragon monster. He's defeated the Hunts <laughs> clan over and over, fought off his own evil clone, and even outdid the Dark Dragon himself. The ultimate dragon! Top tier dragos around the world are scared shitless of this guy, but Jake whooped his butt and sealed him away for good. Or at least for the next thousand years. That'll be someone else's problem. Unfortunately, yeah. Jake has one distinct unavoidable weakness. Sphinx hair. Like the Egyptian what? lion riddle lady? Exactly. Well, that's not random at all. Young and brash though he may be, the world can rest assured that Jake Long will carry on the dragon's legacy. He really is the hippest fire-breathing super lizard out there. Dragon off! All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a dead battle! I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. There, back where it belongs. Yo, <laughs> back to steal something else. I'm gonna go right, with Danny up. Phantom. You got three Danny seconds Phantom. before the Amdrak's gonna show you out. Am what? <laughs> Did he really just say that? Eye of the dragon. Where'd he go? Fire and ice can't mix. Ha! <laughs> Red versus blue. Ready for more? Not a bad trick, G. But anything you can do? I can do better. Well, I can't tell what you're doing. Good. Burned. This was a very unique matchup. With both fighters having such different power sets, it was fascinating to watch them clash together. Jake was technically more skilled thanks to his grandfather's martial arts training and has proven capable of harming ghosts. But Danny's power exactly. and plethora of abilities was difficult for him to counter. Yeah, Danny's no slouch and has fought a few more battles than Jake. Plus, Jake's never dealt with a ghost as powerful as Danny. Those cranky Civil War spirits didn't exactly have ice beams and ghost lasers. While they may have been similar in light speed reactions, 
Danny's flight speed was definitely higher. Also, Jake's fire was comparable to three GBU-43 warheads, commonly referred to as the mother of all bombs. However, Dorothea's fire was equal to 700 of them. And Danny took those flames on like a champ, which means Jake didn't have the firepower he needed to knock the teenage ghost down for good. Danny could overpower Jake's fire with his ecto projectiles, match Jake's duplicates with his own, and even slip past Jake's heightened senses with his invisibility. And while Danny had all those counters, Jake didn't have any against Danny's will or possession. Jake may be the American dragon for good reason, but he couldn't match up to Danny's impressive power, durability, and ghostly abilities. It didn't take long for Jake to fall short in this fantastic battle. The winner is Danny Ugh. Phantom. <laughs> His... Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. All right, what's Battle next? You can get it by clicking the link down below. And if you want to watch more stuff, check the boxes right over there. All right, who's next? No. Again? First off, didn't they do Wonder Woman already? And I had a feeling Danny, Fa I had a feeling Danny Phantom was gonna win because they mentioned that um um that Jake has one unavoidable weakness, Sphinx Sphinx hair. That's the that's very stupid. <laughs> Didn't know that. I'm gonna watch the series again, both of them. And the fact that they used Wonder Woman again, and again She-Ra, of all people. And here's the thing. For those people that think I watched, she watched the Netflix show of She-Ra, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get to it because I was busy. And the fact that, um... They used Wonder Woman again. I mean, she already beat Thor and lost against Rogue. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, hmm. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. And I'll see you all in the next video.